Hello there. Oh, goodness, goodness me. Look at all of these cables, timers, straps, all sorts of things. Opticon scanners, more cables. Oh, so much to sort out when you're trying to do results processing. That, however, is all made a little bit easier with the Budget Volunteer app. Now, hello to all of you. I am Danny Norman, Athlete ID 482. I am a presenter of the With Me Now podcast. It's a weekly independent parkrun podcast which started in 2018, former presenter of the parkrun show podcast, which ran from 2011 until 2015. I'm a former employee of Parkrun UK, as well as a 500 club member, Uber tourist and event director of Surbiton Junior Parkrun, which just turned five years old this August gone. So that's about me, if you're wondering who I am. Now, what is the virtual volunteer app, you may ask? Well, if you didn't know already, it's the official timing and scanning application and is available free of charge from Apple's App Store and Google's Play Store. Now, I've been very fortunate to be given early access to the test version, version 2.0 of the forthcoming update to the app, and I've been playing with it to see what it can do. It is here. Looks rather fancy. Okay. I wanted to bring you a fairly comprehensive example of what it does for those who've never used it before and what the updates mean to those that have. At Surbiton Junior Park Run, we have been up only since the beginning of 2019 and have become big fans and advocates of it. We've never had a failure to produce results come rain or shine and prefer its efficiency to the tangly cabled mess. Oh, there you go. Beep. <laughs> So the tangled mess uh, which involved with regarding all this, uh, the previous system involving the handheld timers and Opticon barcode scanners. Now this video is also intended to give an insight for those that may have been reluctant to try the app in the past, but with the new COVID-19 framework in place and the app being the only permitted system within this, it means that all teams will have to accustom themselves to its functionality. And I'm here to try and show you what it does and alleviate any concerns. Now, I would like to make clear that the app is using a, um, that I'm using is a fairly good indicator of what you'll be using, but you must recognize it's also in the test phase. So there may be a few minor bugs to be removed and the tech people are working on this all the time. And through the test system, if there is something that we can report back and the guys can work on it. So I'd like to thank James Kempany and Rutson from Parkrun HQ uh, for affording me this opportunity, as well as uh, Jake Lodge. Uh, he's involved in many other parties. Newism, the company that makes the app too, uh, down in Australia. And they've given me access and they've given me their time to answer a few questions that I have had about it. So would you like to look a little bit into the app? Now, I've done a bit of pre-recording and I've done a couple of videos. And uh, first up, there's the timer. So I'm going to drop out, I'm going to play that video, and hopefully this will be uh, of interest to you guys. See you in a sec. So let's take a look at the app, version 2. This is the test version. So in the top left-hand corner, you can see the park on tree. Underneath it is Dolly, my cat. Hello there, Dolly. Let's go in, let's take a peek, click on that. This is on an iPhone 10. So keep that in mind. There might be a few differences compared to what device you use. So this is asking me. Let's get hold of it. Scan your Parkrun barcode. I shall do. I shall cover my eyes details. And that now knows that it's me using the app. It's very handy. Now, you have multiple stages where you can do that. You can skip it. You don't need to do it straight away. But I've done it. So now the app knows that it's me. You can skip and come through to the screen anyway. Enable airplane mode. Of course, it's a reminder. So let's do that. Let's turn off the Wi-Fi, go onto the airplane mode. And therefore, that stops calls coming in, especially handy if you're going to use a timer, which we are going to do first. If you just see the top right corner, there is a cog there. Scan your bar parkrun barcode, which I did just a minute ago. You can do that at various stages. I'll show you very quickly. There you go. You can change it over to other people if you're swapping the phone. Ideally not in this instance because of COVID. You keep your phone to yourself. Back, let's go into the timer. There you go, and you can see it's slightly different. Those of you who've used the app before, there is the play button to say start. Some people have been confused about if you hit the timer straight away, it starts recording times. It doesn't do that. It's go into the timing screen and then you have the button to push. So the run director will hopefully say, are you ready? Then go, hit the play button, and then you can see the color slightly change. It turns to a clock, and then in the top, you can see the clock counting down. And then if you're worried about losing the data, as many people are. If you watch, I can close it. I'll close the app. There's a screen recorder that I'm using. Oh, I've closed the app. Has it lost the information? <gasps> no, no, it hasn't. It's still going. You can see the clock runs in the background. Don't panic. Don't worry. It's very, very difficult to lose the timing. So let's just 
say we've got the world record for 5k 30 seconds tap 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 to tap 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 so 12 positions okay relatively low turnout perhaps for some and uh, that's it okay events done tail walkers in hit stop in the top right hand corner so you want to send that file over submit results in the middle there this is a new screen for many of you disable airplane mode certainly shall that automatically goes onto the wi-fi connecting onto my wi-fi obviously you might use your 4g and then this is the important part scan event qr code scan now so tap the scan now bit now this is quite fancy you'll see why in a minute very sensitive very good i've scanned my serpenton junior park run qr code that will be changed after this video is released and then scan your park on barcode again if you haven't already done it so it's asking what event you're going to send this information to for what event that is and then who is sending it and if you just under look underneath the upload button you can see an export bit that is if you want to send the things the old school conventional way like uh, whatsapp and other places and even save onto google drive if you prefer to do that but then you hit upload thank you for submitting your results okay and that's done the time has gone it's gone through that will now be on web fms and that is it really is that simple and of course if you're worried about losing data once again reset clear results are you sure you've got to jump through a couple of stages to get rid of the data it's very very sturdy confirm ready to go but obviously you want to keep the data until everything's being published on the results and that's it really quite simple love it all right let's get rid of that and then bring this up so a couple of bits there i did close the app while the clock was running even if you hit the button to say time 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 and then close the app it will keep that information too and so that's another reassurance that it's really hard to lose the data and uh, yeah you've got to go a long long way and i don't know i know of no instances when an event has done that whereas of course we have had that with other events using the old the stopwatches in the past the transmission from the data from the device into uh, the computer can may not be picked up or lost along the way qr codes these things these are going to be quite important i would like to say and of course i've been given guidance that uh, the qr code is to be treated like a password so it ideally only shown to the volunteer at point of upload so these are for security purposes really again the people who should have access to these qr codes should be known to the the run director volunteer coordinator they shouldn't be shared widely of course that there is anything technical there's a security measure there but yeah treated like a password that's information i've been asked to pass on and uh, i've got some notes here as you can tell that there's going to be a simple guide provided there is a simple guide that i used to before i tested the app so i'd already been using the app anyway that's going to be out there and it's really quite simple i i when i use it more and more i recognize how simplified it really is and i'm, I'm a big fan of it with the time as well of course touching the screen I want to touch upon the fact that you can use the volume button to do that too, because some people worry about the rain and the screen touching, you can use a volume button on your devices to do a timer, so be careful. So of course, if you're listening to anything as well, you do the volume button, say on your headphones, that will do a measure too. That'll be like anything, oh, volume up, that's gonna take a time. And that's to think about, and I recognize I won't cover everything in this. I recognize I may have missed something. If there is anything that I've missed, and you can say in the comments uh, when we publish this video and uh, might address that or hopefully try and address that one to one regarding any questions you may have and the beauty of this is it's uh, the, in terms of the senses you have that visual uh, thing you can have vibrations when it comes to the scanner we'll come to that and a bit too and the beeping and the sound so there's more uh, feedback for you with this app to reassure you as opposed to the previous devices that were very almost one-dimensional in their sense and the feedback in terms of the security so of course like for example the scanner would be you'd have to trust that the data would be on there whereas of course you can see the data in the app and we're going to come to the barcode scanning section in just a second um, and HQ really want to keep the interaction between the run director volunteer coordinator and the volunteers and they want to make sure that if you're doing this, the RDVCs are knowing that you're doing this and that you're uh, going to engage with them by talking to them, say, look, I'm doing that. It's meant to keep that element. You don't want it to become too automated and somebody does something and go away again. There's obviously going to be lots of nuances and behaviours that may happen that we'll learn and adapt. But this system is trying to simplify the whole processing of the results through this particular, do I say dodgy period, actually COVID. It's not been the best of times. Um, the team are aware of most bugs, but of course, if you get anything when the app actually does come out, then please feedback. It's pretty sturdy from what I've uh, been using. It's, it's grand. I'm looking forward to it. 
And uh, it come, coming forward to the video in a second about the uh, barcode scanning, a mistake I made, and I'll go over this again, there's a search, um, there's not even a search entry, that's the wrong thing to say. You can enter someone's name, it's not a search field, there's no access into the uh, WebFMS data, so say like I'm searching for someone to add it in, but all will become clear very shortly in the video regarding the app identifying who is using it when they're sending the data over. Um, and after you see this video, I will then go into a WebFMS a test system so you can see a little bit as to what it does and what it shows you. And so I'll drop out once again. I will show the video that I recorded regarding the barcode scanning and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, next up is barcode scanning. So let's go into the app once again. Here we go, scan your parkrun barcode. I'm not going to, I'm going to skip it on this occasion. And then enable airplane mode, of course, as always, thank you for the tip, it's always a reminder. And then of course, a symbol for the barcode, quite international. And there we have the barcode scanning screen. So let's get our first athlete, shall we? So the first athlete comes over to you to scan. There we go. And they give you the position token. Obviously, hopefully not giving and holding out so you can scan it without having to touch it. We recognised during this COVID period that minimal interaction, minimal touching. So hopefully they hold it out for you so that they can just scan it without having to touch it. Like I'm sort of simulating, so someone's holding it for you and you move the phone and then it registers and reads. It's quite sturdy. So for example, let's do this athlete there you go, take it away, try it again, reads it, knows it's already done it before, needs a position token to go with it. There you go. And then you move on to the next athlete. Now, if you try to do a position token next, it will not allow you, it will refuse you. So, to this position, but no, I need an athlete data, please. And so, okay, I'll give you athlete data. And then position, and just supposing, an athlete comes over to you and says, here's my barcode. You scan it, oh, oh, I've lost, dropped, the position token's missing. Don't worry, you can progress. And if you notice just then, that I'd already recognized that barcode as having been scanned before. It knows he's already been scanned, so he won't do it again. It's rather clever. So that's that simple side of things. So let's submit results. You've got the barcode scanned. Disable airplane mode, certainly shall. And then I'm on to the Wi-Fi again, connect to the internet 4G if you're out in the open, which you will be, of course. <laughs> Chances are in uh, a green space or field or by the seaside. And or, uh, it may be, you might be in Wi-Fi signal range if you're by a cafe or something. And then scan event QR code, scan that. Again, this is rather clever. That will be owned by their own director, volunteer coordinator, uh, whoever has that. These are essential, these QR codes, in terms of getting this done very quickly, but also must be treated like passwords. And then, as I didn't scan my barcode earlier, let's do it now. And so, protecting my eyes details, just in case. It knows it's me sending the data through. Again, you can export the information if you want via other methods. But if you hit upload, I'm sending this data for our service and juniors, because that's the QR code I've been given, because I'm the event director for that event. Upload, thank you for submitting your results. And those files, that piece of information is online. And once again, if you're worried about losing the data, hit reset, clear results, it's asking you twice. If you notice the camera's frozen here right now, that might be a slight bug. Don't worry, go back, come back in again. Camera's working again if you add, need to add some more information on but reset it. Again, it's asking you twice. You have to go through a couple of stages to get rid of the data. Really quite clever. Sold on it, love it. So hopefully that's another reassurance for you about how the barcode scanning works. It's, again, trying to reassure people. Those of you who've already been using the app, you're going to be sold about it. I also recognise that the carpet that I had for background there, it looks like a bit of TV noise. It's a bit of fuss. So if you're wondering what, what's going on with the carpet, it's grey and black and mottled, but that's that's what's going on there. So again, just wanted to reassure people that event teams, if you have concerns, worries, that the app is trying to reduce um, just cables, wires, complexities, uh, trying to reduce the amount of, uh, I guess, uh, 
files that may go missing or be corrupt and you don't want to end up with loads of 5959s. It's not the end of the world if there's 5959, of course, but this is going to reduce the rate. And of course, Germany, Australia, and lots of other, oh, new nations going forward like Japan or App only, and they've really fell in love with it. It's been a great success. So of course, there's a the transition for the UK, especially to come over to that. I'm an advocate and uh, of course, people are going to have questions about it, people's own personal phones. And, and we, I very much respect that. And I think HQ respect that too. But uh, yeah, I, I'm obviously going to try and sell it. But hopefully this video has reassured you about what the app does and how it can do it. So let's move into the next stage. So I'm going to share the screen. So now I've gone into WebFMS. So the results process in terms of the QR code, what does that do? Let's have a look. So if I add this, if I add into the stream, so hopefully you can see this. And hopefully I'm nice and big, maybe on a TV monitor or computer screen. Here's the web FMS. So what I do, I'll make the screen even larger so you can see it. And I'll go into the, the results uh, visit itself. And what I will do, I also, uh, I recognize that I'm blocking the top right-hand corner off with uh, the logo. Let's see that, because you need to see the menu. So um, I'll show you this menu top right, event QR codes. Okay, changes that you made may not be saved. That's fine, don't worry about that for now. You're gonna have this. You're gonna have the QR code available to you. You can scan this right now. This is going to be changed. This is not the one that we'll be using for Serbs and Juniors. If you know, it's a little park run tree, which is or the original UKTT tree, which is there. Thank you, Ian Rutson, for doing that. We'll change to the proper park run tree, the, the contemporary version, the modernized version. And then we have in the menu, if you go to the, uh, come on, Danny, it's been a while since I used this, um, the volunteer rosters, let's go here. And then if you go to event actions and then print roster, you're going to have the include the QR code. So many teams that print the roster via this, you can include the QR code to be on there too, which is another handy little touch that's put in. So if we go back to processing of the results, let's just say you're going to create one. Yep, 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 yep. And there's no incidents. There's been no incidents today. And then you can see the screen. Now you see that I've been playing with it and sending files over. Because I scanned my barcode, it knows which volunteer has done it myself and click and then you can click these things you can highlight them all like this parkrun id so again there i am date on file the date that it was sent over the file types so you know if it's a timer or a barcode file how many records are there you can view the information and if you need to go into the file and adapt it and edit it as they well many long-term long-standing events have done in case there's a mistake you need to change you can save to uploadable file format um, you can do this too. This is amazing in terms of it all. There you go. CSV file, Excel, you can change it, then re-upload it. The same system as before in terms of uploading barcode and timer files off the old gear. That's still there in case, but obviously we want to really be driving forward on the app side of things. And then, of course, you're selecting the ones you use. So if there's a file in there, so you're going to have maybe two files, time, two timer files, for example. You're going to have two timers. Many events will have two timers, meant to have two timers, that if you only want to use one of the timer files, then you can just select that, and then you can get the other one. And then you can select the barcodes, uh, files, and then I, their information, let's have a look. They're saying there's some errors. So I've got some barcodes scanned without a position attached, so it's forewarning you beforehand. That is to alert you, and then these files are like, it's all okay. Everything's been assigned, all okay. And then hit next. And of course, it's going to tell us this server to juniors. It's recognizing these people's names and files. These are not real people. These are test accounts. This is off the test sheet you get off the wiki. So don't worry about this information. And then you go to close to say, and of course, it's giving us pinks because of course of duplications, it's giving us oranges because of age brackets, this is for a junior event, uh, if anybody over 14 without permit, uh, or prior allowance as it were, um, then it was going to come up with orange, so many event teams who haven't done junior results won't know what the orange is for, but that's what it is for. Anyway, all by the by, there you can see that it just ports the information in and then you hit finish. So I'm really impressed with it all and if you think from start to finish that you're going to have a volunteer there doing the timing or barcode scanning, they do their job and and the role, I should say, and they go over to the volunteer coordinator, volunteer coordinator if they go over to the run director and say, can I have the QR code? And they scan that. And of course, they're not having to touch uh, any of the equipment like you would do with this if you're handing it back to the people, the timers, they have their phone, they, they scan, no need to touch. And then they have that and they send the file, the file goes into WebFMS and then the people processing the results 
can do it on their phone and they could do it on a laptop at home or they could do it wherever they could do it on a tablet and very, very quickly. So in theory, the tower walk is in and everyone scanned the time a file is sent over, the barcode scanner is sent over, uh, files are sent over and then someone goes into WebFMS, click, click, click. And if everything's all okay without any major issues, which can often happen, then you hit finish and you could have the results up and done within a matter of minutes, almost as fast as a chip time you know, um, race in an event. And Parkrun isn't that, but they're using manual entries, keeping the community feel of people being engaged and filling these roles and making it super swift and safe, especially under the COVID-19 framework. So I'm excited. Um, hopefully it's going to allow us in the future to just become more efficient and, and certainly in this time a lot safer in our engagement in a volunteer aspect. So hopefully that's been fairly comprehensive. Hopefully there's reassurances there. Um, I may not, may not have recognised, um, sorry, I may not have gone over everything. I recognise the fact that I may have missed something. People have additional questions, but like I said, if you want to post in the comments, then I'll look at that and uh, we can uh, hopefully feed back to you guys if you see this video. And uh, again, you're going to have the simple guide come out, but practice play. Download the current app if you have, uh, a, if you have the ability to, you have access to it. Get that on your phone, use the current app, get used to that, just play, play, play. And when the update comes in, you're going to be a lot more familiar with the update. And those of you who've already been using it, the update, you're going to love it. It's not um, as uh, onerous as it may seem. It's uh, once you go through this system and play with it and test it, I, I think it's going to be revolutionary. So thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me your time. And uh, yeah, all the very best. Today is the 13th of September 2020. It's an interesting period in time, but love to everybody that's watching and uh, hope this resource is very handy for the coming weeks and months so all the very best i'm going to say ta-ta going to hit end of the broadcast and thank you once again for watching me <laughs>